Hello, my beautiful, beautiful friend. Have you been feeling the overwhelm? Have you been feeling just down in the dumps, hot mess, mom, out of control kind of life? Let me talk to you. I've been a mess. I've been depressed. I've been overwhelmed. I've been to the bottom of the pits. I almost ended my life because, quote, motherhood got to be too much. But I realized a few things. For one, home management is not equivalent to motherhood. You can suck at one while excelling at the other. Okay, girl, I already had everything I needed to see the good in life in order to succeed, in order to thrive and find absolute joy, and so do you. You can be the calm in the storm. You can set the energetic tone for those around you, for your entire household. You hold more power than you've ever realized. You don't have to do anything. You get to. It is your privilege. It's an honor. It's a divine responsibility to be the queen of your home. It's not a burden. You're in charge. You're the ruler. You're the chaos coordinator. You're in control of how you show up in your own life, and you are the main character of your own story. You are surrounded by abundant blessings, not buried in burdens. You are in the exact right place, mama. You are the exact right mom for your kids. It's not a mistake that you were put together on this planet. Of all the moms across all time and space, it's your destiny, your legacy to be with that child. You have to stop. We have to stop this mommy martyrdom narrative. Misery loves its company, but so does excitement and joy. So let's get excited about motherhood again, about life. It's time for more than survival mode. It's time to rise. It's time to thrive. It's time for you to believe to your core that you are meant to bloom. Hello, beautiful. Oh, <clears throat> hello, beautiful. That was weird. I got a little frog in my throat. Hello, beautiful. This is take two. Um, it's that kind of day. Good morning. I am so glad you're here right now. So glad. Um, real quick before we get started, if you have not gotten the get started guide that is one of my email offers, please go get that and get started. Okay. It's got all of my best freebies that I've had for the last two years, all strategically planned out together. It's kind of like a little binder book, um, that you can go ahead and print out. So it starts out with the mindset, uh, makeover. Let's get thinking how you're thinking, um, which I think is a perfect place to start, as always. Mindset, your reality is what you make it. It really is. Um, if you decide that your life is going to suck, it's going to suck. Your your mind is always proving yourself right. So let's get our mind in the right place. All right. And then it moves into the Stressless Toolkit. Who can't use that? This is all of my favorite tools to help ease anxiety and daily stress. Um, I struggled with anxiety for a really, really long time, and it's amazing to see how anxiety in my life has shifted and pivoted. Um, like I was just experiencing the other day, uh, like a sense of dread and like existential dread, um, just, just sort of this like physical anxiety within me. And I was like, wow, that's what like just anxiety feels like without without having that fuel of constant daily stress making it bigger. And it was like really easy to just snap out of it, to breathe through it, to move on, to distract myself from it. I was like, wow, it's so much easier. Stressless toolkit, everybody needs this. Um, and then it also moves into my kitchen templates, printable kitchen templates to make kitchen time, meal time, grocery time easier. There's this cute little uh, like grocery shopping trip um, templates in there. You know, you print out a bunch of them or print out one and laminate it and use a dry erase pen on it. Um, and I just think that helps make life so much easier when meal time isn't your biggest stress. Um, like seriously, when when you know that food's going to be taken care of, that, that helps me rest easy. Okay. Um, and so today, speaking of food, we are going to talk about, yeah, you really might want those kitchen templates now. <laughs> We're going to talk about how to save money in the kitchen. And I know everybody's talked about this so many times. You Google it and you hear a lot of the same things again and again. Um, I used to be the queen of a budget. And I mean, like, I was a queen at keeping my budget. I had everything planned to the dollar, to the cent. 
and I'm talking like my grocery plan, not just like, oh, I have a $300 grocery budget. It was like, no, I know that I'm spending this much on milk or we're not getting milk. Um, everything was to the dollar. I knew how much everything cost at every store. Like this was when I had one kid. My brain worked a little bit differently at the time. I could, I could hold all of these numbers in my head and know I could make a really great meal plan. Um, and I can make a really great store plan. I would map out my grocery plan so that I, I never had to double back on aisles. I knew exactly where everything was on every aisle and at what price it was. Um, I used to work in grocery. I was, well, I didn't really work in grocery. I was a manager over a grocery department um, for a little while. So it's like I knew I, I was taking the grocery manager approach to my grocery shopping and I was good at it. Um, but then I had another couple kids. We had COVID. I started doing grocery pickup a lot. And then it's like I walk in a grocery store and I'm like, I don't feel at home here anymore. I don't know where anything is. I don't know what anything costs, like, because inflation happened during that time. Um, and now my brain is like at a place, you know, three kids plus a business later. And I don't have the capacity to store all of those price points in my head anymore. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's where we're at now. And I want to talk about what's saving me money now that I can't make that perfectly budgeted grocery shopping list, um, the way that I used to. So this is how, um, I'm really, really starting to save a bit more money. Um, all the little hacks and tricks I've, I've come across because I am, whew, have I ever told you guys this? Um, I have struggled with, uh, with self-medicating with retail therapy. And when I worked in retail, um, I basically didn't bring home a paycheck because <laughs> I was surrounded by things to buy every day. And if I had a bad day at work, which was a lot of the time, I would buy things to make myself feel better. Um, so if I'm at the grocery store and I'm starting to get stressed and anxious and like, feel like I'm having a bad time, there's this part in my brain that just tells me you need to buy things so that you feel better. Um, and I've had a couple beautiful stories come out of that where, you know, a couple of my kids were throwing a huge, huge fit at Target one time. And I rewarded myself with this clearance coffee mug. And it's one of my favorite mugs. It's the one that says attitude of gratitude. And that has shown up in my social media and in my stories many times because that just, it shifted me. Um, yeah, that day kind of shifted me. And then my kid later put a chip in it. <laughs> and I thought that was really ironic because he was playing in the sink when I told him, stop playing in the sink, you're going to break something. And then he, he chips the cup. It says attitude of gratitude. And I just, <sighs> you know, life is funny. It's really funny. Um, but let's save you some money on your grocery bill, right? Okay. Um, so even as a shopaholic, as someone who can't make a very detailed grocery, grocery, uh, list, these are my money saving tips. Okay. So number one, um, shop your kitchen first. Have you heard this, this concept before to shop your kitchen first? So stand in your kitchen when you make your meal plans. And when you think, um, like taking an inventory of like, how much milk do we have in the fridge? How long is that going to get us? What do we need? What does my kitchen need right now? Um, and what what can I already make that's in my kitchen? Um, that's really how you shop your kitchen first. Be in the kitchen, know the kitchen. Um, and a little side note, one thing you could really do that's going to help save a lot of money is if you challenge yourself to make meals exclusively with products you have at home already. All right, so like make your meal plan and be like, I'm gonna go to the grocery store today, but I already have a whole dinner here that I can put together. Um, even if it's not in your mind, a perfect balanced meal or a meal that makes total sense. Um, I think it can be a lot of fun like to challenge your brain that way. That's so good for you to challenge your brain to do something new. But I think it's also like really great for like your palate um, and just for fun, just to try something different that might not work out. I think it's really good for your mentality to try things that you know might be a total bust, but you're going to try it anyway and it's going to be fun. Um, and you know, if the meal doesn't turn out exactly as planned, oh well, sometimes it doesn't. Um, that's life. 
It's a great life lesson. Um, my number two tip is to procrastinate your purchases. This is what saved me from spending all of my money when I was constantly inside of a store every day, um, wanting to buy things, thinking, oh, I'll just buy it now so I don't have to buy it later. <clears throat> I got this mentality of constantly going through that checkout line every single day on my way home from work. And I was spending a lot more money until I started procrastinating purchases. All right. I have always been great at procrastinating everything in my life except for buying stuff. It was always a, let me buy it right now. Um, and we live in a day and age now where it's like so easy to just buy things and have them. Um, you know, you don't have to leave the house. You don't have to get off the couch. It can be delivered directly to your door, whether it's Amazon or Postmates or Instacart or whatever. Um, it's so easy to buy stuff now. And procrastinating your purchases will help you save money. All right. So don't buy today what you can wait until next time to buy. Um, wait until tomorrow. Give yourself time to think about the purchase. Um, Cause sometimes after 24 hours, I'm like, I don't even want that anymore or come home and realize, oh, I don't actually need that. Um, and also to in procrastinating your purchases, get comfortable with letting things run out. Um, like how often are you adding things to your grocery list to go buy today that aren't even out yet? All right. I mean like, yeah, toilet paper, it's good to be, we, we have learned in past years, it's good to have extra toilet paper on hand, of course. Um, don't let that one run out, but like toothpaste will go longer than you think it will. And if you run out of toothpaste, you can always make a little at home, you know, baking soda paste to, to get by. Um, but I, I have realized that toothpaste consistently in our house lasts like three weeks longer than I think it's going to. So that's money I can be saving on my budget right now by not buying it ahead of time. Like I can wait, I can procrastinate that purchase. I can get that later. We don't actually need that right now. Um, and sometimes like with snacks, kids snacks, I was always buying preventatively. Um, gosh, my kids go through so many granola bars. And I realized like, you know what? Let's, let's teach them about letting them run out instead of buying double at one time that they're going to go through in the same time frame as, you know, a, a single purchase. Let's let them run out before we go grocery shopping next. Um, and that's another way I'm procrastinating purchases actually is um, shifting my grocery store days. So I used to go once a week or sometimes accidentally twice a week, like I'd go Monday and then Friday. Um, and so now I'm trying, and then, then, then I was going like every Monday I was going grocery shopping. Um, and now I'm trying to go like Monday and then the following Friday and then skip a week and go Monday. So I'm trying to go like every 10 days instead of every single week on a consistent basis. Um, and it's actually like saving on money because every time I walk in the store, I'm at risk of spending money that I'm not supposed to be spending. I'm at risk of, you know, letting retail therapy take its course and just buying things to make myself feel better instead of facing my feelings in my journal at home, um, going for a walk, something more productive and healthy and something that's actually going to process the feelings instead of mask them with temporary joy and dopamine of, yay, I bought this thing, or look, I got cake that we don't actually need at the grocery store. Um, those types of things, you know? <laughs> um, number three is to be okay with subbing your typical products. Okay, this one can be really hard to admit, but I think a lot of us as grown adults, we have like a favorite, a favorite version of everything that we want. You know, we have a favorite type of apple. We have a favorite type of ranch dressing. Um, <clears throat> probably have a favorite type of alternative milk. And it's like, I don't want anything else but this one. I don't want the generic version. I don't want, you know, like I only want this one. And what you have to admit once you realize that is that you are a picky eater. And that's where your child gets it from. We are all picky eaters, but somehow we convince ourselves that like as adults, it's okay. I just have one that I prefer. It's like, okay, test yourself. You have one you prefer, but you're not a picky eater. Buy a different one. Buy the one that's on sale. Buy something new. 
um, change it up a little bit. And again, this is kind of like the challenging yourself to make a freezer meal, like a meal out of pieces of your freezer or out of your pantry is it's kind of going to force you to rethink what you know about yourself. (laughs) It's going to give you this opportunity to try something new, to have a new experience. It's going to shake things up. It's going to make it so you're not living the same exact mundane day every single day. Um, it's going to add some character to your life. Uh, and I think that's really great and really beautiful. Okay. And number four, we have take advantage of store pickup. This works in my favor more often than not. I know there's a lot to say about like them picking your produce and sometimes they sub things really weird. Um, and my least favorite is when they, they don't sub something and it's like, you know, we're, we're pretty much out of coffee creamer and then they don't bring me out a coffee creamer because they're like, oh, we didn't have the one you wanted. And I'm like, I will literally take any coffee creamer. Just give, give me some like, give me some heavy whipping cream and caramel syrup. Like I can make a do. <laughs> Get me any coffee creamer except for hazelnut. That's gross. Um, so that's it. That's the only time I really have an awful time with them. Um, yeah, that's the only thing that really sucks. Usually it works in my favor and it's like there. Um, last week I bought some lunch meat that was 50% on sale. This is pretty much the only reason I was buying this lunch meat, but they were out of the one I wanted. So they had to sub it with a bigger package for the same sale price. So I got the biggest package that they have. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Um, unfiltered moment. Um, I got the biggest package, I got the biggest package of meat they had for the sale price of their smallest package of meat. Um, and that was a really big win for me. That was a really exciting grocery win. Um, so sometimes store pickup really works in your favor, especially if you're like on your period and it's going to be really hard not to go down some extra aisles and buy some extra stuff just in case you need it when you're not feeling good. Um, that's like the worst thing we can do is buy a bunch of just in case. All right. There's emergency preparedness, but we don't need just in case. Just in case is a money suck and it's a scarcity mindset. I'm not going to lie about that. Okay. Number five. Um, okay. Hold on. Moving on. This is my last one here. Um, no more shenanigans. All right. Number five, this is a life rule across the board. This does not just apply to grocery shopping. Okay. Here's your big life rule. The biggest takeaway you can take from today is don't ever make any important decision on an empty stomach. All right. And groceries are an important decision. You're nurturing your family. You're feeding your family. You're feeding yourself. Um, it's important and it's you dealing with your budget and not overspending, um, making practical decisions for the future, the near future. Um, Don't make important decisions on an empty stomach. Don't go grocery shopping on an empty stomach. Um, Forbes actually did a study, and I usually don't know where I'm referencing my studies from, but this one comes from Forbes. I actually know that, um, and I trust this study. But they say that those who are hungry when they go shopping spend 64% more money than those who were not hungry. So 64% is kind of a lot of your budget. Like that's a lot of grocery money. Um, especially if you're shopping for a bigger family, that number can get, yeah, that gets kind of huge. You spend 64% more. Um, that's, that's a good chunk of change. Um, yeah, let's not go (laughs) grocery shopping hungry. Um, the study also says that hunger makes us want to eat which means that we, we are thinking about seeking, acquiring, and consuming food. Don't be hungry when it, you need to make an important decision. Okay. Nurture yourself, feed yourself, um, and be in a good mood when you're shopping. Um, this is, this is a great way to ensure that you're going to stay under your budget And that you're going to find extra like unexpected sales and digital coupons at checkout, like believe these things. All right. If you go to the store and you, you plan on having a bad time, you're going to have a bad time. Okay. So make it enjoyable. Your energy is going to affect your reality. It's going to affect, you know, the mindset you go into it with. Are you going to have a good time? Are you here to get your shopping done? 
Are you here to stick to budget? If you go in thinking that you're going to fail at all this, you go in thinking the lights are going to bother me, the people are going to bother me, everything's so expensive, um, I never stick to my budget anyway, the kids are probably going to have a really bad tantrum. If you're bringing that energy with you, if you're bringing that attitude with you, if you're bringing that mindset with you, that's what you're going to get. All right, so plan on having a good time when you go grocery shopping. Plan on getting in, getting out, getting your stuff done, and getting the best sale deals possible. And when you believe it, you're going to see it. It really does. All right, friend, I love you so much, and I really hope you find this super, super helpful. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end of this episode. If you wouldn't mind writing me a raving review, I would be in tears reading it because I always am. Um, I seriously, seriously love love reading through my reviews um, on Apple Podcasts. It it makes my day. It brings tears to my eyes. You guys have such beautiful words to say about me. And like, honestly, starting this podcast has shifted my perception of myself. Um, I, I used to think that no one wanted to hear from me. I thought I didn't have anything important to say. I used to hate the sound of my voice. I honestly did. Um, I thought my voice sounded like gravel. Like I just, in my own head, my voice doesn't sound great, but I've gotten so many reviews from you guys that say you, that you find my voice soothing and I'm like, I don't, I don't hear it, but I'm really glad you do. Um, so you guys, it's good for my self-esteem. It's good to keep me going. It's good to keep me showing up for you. And I mean, it's such a nice little tiny way that you can repay me for all of these juicy tidbits on how to enjoy life better and how to save money on groceries. Um, I would just really, 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 really appreciate a review um, and screenshot it and email it to me. Hello at BrittanyClarkson.com because Apple does not alert me when you guys post a review. So just saying, I love you. Thanks for being here. Are you feeling totally buried in responsibility and burnt out on showing up? Been there and I created this totally free bundle of resources for you. You have to get the Get Started Guide if you haven't already. If you're ready to strip off the unnecessary baggage and limiting beliefs you've been carrying around, if you are so done making things more difficult than they need to be, if you're ready for guilt-free rest and enjoyment in your life, you need the Get Started Guide. This instant download is full of my favorite resources, the Mindset Makeover, the Stress Less Toolkit, and my super trendy and adorable kitchen templates to make meals and groceries a little bit simpler and a whole lot prettier. The Get Started Guide is made up of tools and practices to help you cope with stress and anxiety. And because so much of your happiness is determined by your mindset, this instant download is what you need to start thinking about the way that you think so you can overcome what's overwhelming you, take control of your days, and love the life you've got Get your free download of the Get Started Guide today and get started loving your life. Find it in the description below. And thank you so much for listening to this episode today. Your involvement and your encouragement is so loved and appreciated. If you wouldn't mind doing one or all of the following tiny little favors for me, I would so, so greatly appreciate it. Okay, one, if you could make sure that you hit the follow button so you don't miss another episode, that's going to benefit you just as much as it does me, maybe more. Number two, if you could leave me a review down below, especially if you're listening to Apple Podcasts, that would be so appreciated. Literally, I cry over the reviews that I read. I love them so much. It makes me feel so deeply connected to you, and it helps others find my show by recommending it to new listeners every day. And number three... Be bold, be brave, don't be stingy. When you know something, it's your responsibility to share it with a friend. So make it easy. Share this episode with a friend. And if you choose to share it on Instagram, can you please, please tag me? Because I would so love to get connected and to see it. At Britt Clarkson. All right. Thanks, friend. Love you so much. Till next time.